and welcome to a strange episode of One Too Many, a show about wine. Now, I call it strange is because on this episode, we don't actually have any bottles of wine. But don't turn over just yet. I do have wine, but it's in can form. Now, I've never tried a wine from a can before. I'm very excited. I'm a little bit nervous. Is wine in a can as good as wine in a bottle? Is it better? Why are people making wine and putting it in cans? Hopefully I'll answer a few of those questions in the episode. But we've got two great wines here for you. Uh, first of all, an English wine. Come on, we've got to support this wine as much as possible. Uh, this is the Uncommon. So these two wines were produced by a couple of young entrepreneurs, Alex and Henry. Uh, back in 2018 they started the company, so it's still a brand new company. We've got two wines here. We have got a sparkling Bacchus. We've got a sparkling Rosé as well. This is made up from Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier. So the same grape varieties you'll find in English sparkling wine, in Champagne as well. The grapes are grown down in Surrey. There's some amazing vineyards now down there. Um, not just Surrey, you know, all the southern counties, Kent, Essex. We've got, you know, makes us really, really good stuff. So go out and, and support English wine as much as possible. Both these wines, 2018. Now, if you lived in the UK in 2018, you'll remember it was a very long, hot summer. Great for growing grapes. Um, I believe that 2018 will now be the benchmark year where all other English wines will either try to get as good or even better. Um, so yeah, really exciting to try these wines. Uh, and then we're going to go to Hungary and uh, may have heard of a company called Most Wanted. Uh, their philosophy is quite simple. They just make wine that people mostly want. <laughs> um, again, we've got a Pinot Grigio this time, a, a rosé version and a, a white version. Now, uh, interesting to see um, the difference between these different styles of wine. Hungary are making some cracking wine at the moment. Uh, they make some of the world's best dessert wine. Uh, there's a Norwegian there called Tokai. Makes some of the most amazing uh, ferments. A really dry white wine there as well. Uh, yeah, hungry. Go and get yourself a bottle if you see one in the supermarket. Uh, yeah, but it will be interesting to see. Not quite sure how I'm going to drink these. Do you drink them straight out the can? Um, I have got a couple of glasses here just if I want to be civil or not. Uh, but let's have a little taste and see how we get on. So remember, these are all sparkling wines. So just be careful when you open them, they don't fizz everywhere. Um, let's start off with the Uncommon. So this is their Backers 2018. There we go. Um, not sure whether to just drink it straight out of the can, but you know, let's, let's try it out of the can first. Oh, wow. Oh, lots of elderflower on there. And pouring it out now, wow. The color is extremely light. Very, very light. Oh, yes. Uh, as I was saying earlier, you know, 2018 was an absolute cracking year for English wine. The fruit on this is really, really good. Mmm. Oh, wow. The Uncommon also, they, they try and make low alcohol wines. You know, these are only 11.5%. Uh, both come in 250ml cans. That's really good for an English, English sparkling wine. Um, does it taste any difference coming out of the can? It's a hard one to say. Oh, it's, it, do you know what, it's exactly the right temperature as well, especially on a nice hot sunny day. Don't forget all these wines are you know, pretty much designed for picnics, barbecues, taking you know, with you for, if you're going to a day for, at the beach. But more importantly, if you just want one glass of wine, you know, how many times do people actually open up a bottle of wine and just want one glass? Well, I know I don't, you know, I've never just had one glass out of a bottle, but these are designed for people that just want to have a glass of wine but they don't fancy opening up a, a bottle of sparkling to themselves. And it makes sense, really. Um, now, the next one is their um, Pinot Rosé. So this is that Pinot Noir, Pinot Meunier. Oh, there we go. So a little bit out of the can first. And... Oh, well. Wow. 
huge hit of chain. And again, the, look at the flavour, I mean the colour is absolutely astounding. Extremely light in colour. I mean that to me, that's a rosé, you know. Uh, my style of rosé is, is as light colour as possible, um, but oh, really fruity, you know. I'm, I'm not a big fan of sparkling rosé, um, but you know, we'll, we'll give it a go. Ooh, actually, there's more fruit on the nose than there was on the palate. It's quite dry. Yeah, quite dry rosé. Um, yeah, really, really interesting, you know. And you've got to keep remembering, these are English wines. You know, don't forget that, that we're making some of the best sparkling wine in the world. Um, for wine out of the can, not bad for the first attempts that I've tried. So, yeah, yeah, really good. Uh, let's go over to the... Wines most wanted from Hungary now. So these are both Pinot Grigio. We've got a, a wet Pinot. We've got a uh, Pinot that's a rosé. It'd be interesting to see um, if it is 100% Pinot because actually the skins on Pinot Grigio do have a slight tint of red to them. So if there was any skin content to make it rosé, then it will be 100% Pinot Grigio. Oh, let's try it out the can first. Oh, wow. Really interesting, very different to the first two. Big mouth coating flavours, but less bubbles, actually. Um, I think it's gonna be a, like a semi sort of sparkling wine. Um, uh, a little bit darker than the backers, but it's funny actually, because I don't know why I'm smelling the can, because you can't actually get any aromas from the wine when it's in the can. Mm. Yeah, I mean, that's really, that, oh, lots of sort of apple in there, crunchy, you know, almost like as you're just going to bite into a crunchy golden uh, green apple. So really good. And the acidity is quite low, so they make them all quite easy drinking. Again, they're all quite low in alcohol, they're all sort of like 11 and a half percent. And that's the idea about these wines, that they don't want to be sort of big full bodied wines, they want to be fun. And every time I go and look at these sort of wines, especially in cans, you've got to have a bit of fun with them. You know, they do take the wine seriously, but at the end of the day, we want people to enjoy the wine. But yeah, that's, that's really good. So this is now the, the Pinot Grigio Rosé, which we'll try. We'll try it out the can first. Mm. Ooh, lots of sort of strawberries and cream in that one. Uh, interesting to see the colour. Wow, very, very light in colour compared to the, to the English wine. It's been a bit aged. Interesting. It, it hasn't. Do you know in, if you've ever had like a, an aged uh, uh, rose champagne, for instance, and you get that like brioche and biscuit and butter on it? Oh, yeah, really interesting. Oh, wow. Do you know what? If you hadn't told me that was out of a can, that's really good. Uh, Pinot Grigio Rose from Hungary. Really interesting, um, but all these wines are. I'm quite surprised. The quality is very good for wine out of a can. Um, now, price point, we'll look at that in a minute because don't forget, you know, English wine is still a premium product, so you are going to pay more for English wine, and also you are going to pay more because of what it is. You know, you're paying because it's in a can, so it's all about taking it with you, you know, it's not just about buying a big bottle and just having a glass out of, so you are gonna pay a bit of extra for, for having the inner can, but let's have a little look at the prices now. So just before I tell you about the prices, uh, just going back to the, the sparkling rosés, it reminds me of when I first started drinking wine. Back in college, um, I think I was about 16, um, sorry, I mean 18, and uh, we wouldn't buy a sparkling rosé, but what we would buy are the big old boxes of cheap California rosé, and then we'd go out and buy the most expensive sparkling water we possibly could to mix it in with the wine. Um, I think the sparkling water was actually more expensive than the wine itself. Uh, loads of ice cubes, and that would be my sort of first taste of wine into this amazing industry. 
Um, thankfully, my palate has come on a long way since then. Uh, but I'm, you know, I do like a spritzer now and again. Uh, if you love spritzers, please carry on drinking them. Don't forget, we've all got different taste buds. We all enjoy wine in different ways. Some people enjoy wine in cans. Some people enjoy wine in bottles. But let's get down to the prices. So, don't forget, English wine, premium product still, four ninety nine. That's now, now that's for 250 mils, which is a large glass of wine in a restaurant. So 4.99 for a, a decent English wine, it, it's not a bad price. Uh, these are available from Waitrose. Uh, and then the Hungarian stuff, slightly smaller cans. So you are getting less for your money. Uh, 200 mil cans, uh, these are £2.50. Now I think uh, very good value, very, very good value for, for the quality of wine you get there. Which do I prefer? Since I've never tasted wine in, in, out of a can before, and this is my first time, my heart says English, but my palate's going more towards the Hungarian. Um, I think it's absolutely amazing. The, this Pinot Grigio Rosé is, is amazing. Yeah, so, um, but you know, I love English wine. I do love English wine. Uh, thanks for watching this uh, episode. It's, it's been a good one. It's, uh, it's been unusual, you know, no bottles or cans. Um, if you want to ask me any questions about these wines or any other wine that you can find in the can, you can go over and follow me on social media on Twitter and Instagram, or please uh, subscribe to the channel. We've got some amazing episodes and shows coming up. Uh, all I can say, guys, is go out, uh, grab yourself a can, and we'll see you on the next episode. Cheers.